By the beginning of World War II in 1939, the once dominant biplanes were becoming obsolete. Monoplanes had finally shown their superior performance and many air forces of the late 1930s began getting rid of biplanes in favor of monoplanes. Although biplanes were more maneuverable and agile than monoplanes, the latter were faster and had much more potential. Some countries still believed biplanes were worthy fighters into the late 1930s. They tried to reach the upper limits of biplane performance and still use them in their air forces. In this video, I will go over the top 5 best biplanes of the Second World War. The last American fighter biplane to be produced and served near World War II was the Grumman F3F. Designed to improve upon the previous biplane named the F2F, the F3F prototype flew for the first time in March 1935. The new F3F featured a longer fuselage and wingspan and improved upon the stability issues the F2F faced. After weeks of testing, the first orders for this new biplane were placed in August 1935. The first model of the F3F, the F3F1, was easier to handle and maneuver but had poor cockpit visibility. It used a 650 horsepower Pratt & Whitney engine and could reach speeds of 371 kilometers per hour. After further testing, the F3F2 was designed and built. It featured a far more powerful 950 horsepower Wright engine. This was not enough to compete with monoplanes, and the US Navy understood biplanes were becoming obsolete. More promising monoplanes, such as the F4F and the F2A Buffalo, were taking longer to develop than planned. Because of this delay, plans were drawn up to create the F3F variant. Being the most advanced F3F, it could reach speeds of 425 kilometers per hour and climb at a rate of 14 meters per second with its 950 horsepower engine. One important characteristic of a plane is its cruise speed. Cruise speeds are usually slower than max speeds, but they offer the most economical speed as it is the most fuel and engine efficient speed. The F3F had a cruise speed of 240 kilometers per hour which compared to other planes of the era, wasn't that great. To make up for this, the plane had an impressive range of 1,600 kilometers. On the other hand, one of the worst aspects of the F3F was its forward armament. Although it could carry two 52 kilogram bombs, it was armed with one 7.62 millimeter machine gun and one 12.7 millimeter machine gun. All F3Fs were taken out of service shortly before the Pearl Harbor attacks, as it was clear that other fighters from around the world could outperform it. During the first few months of the war, 117 F3Fs were used for training and utility roles. A total of 147 F3Fs were produced from 1936 to 1939. The Avia B-534 was one of the most modern fighter biplanes of the late 1930s and made up most of the Czech aircraft during the years leading up to World War II. The Czechoslovakian government was confident in biplane performance as they were more maneuverable and had good climb rates compared to early monoplanes. In the early 1930s, plans were drawn up to develop a new fighter for the Czechoslovak Air Force. The B-534 was developed in an improved version of the Avia B-34, which was an earlier biplane fighter. After proving to be superior to other competing fighter designs, a group of B-534s were purchased by the Czechoslovak government in 1934 and were admitted into service in 1935. Four main series of B-534s were utilized in the Air Force. The first version had one 7.92 VZ 28mm machine gun in each wing, along with two 7.92mm machine guns over the engine. A radio was also included. The second initiative saw all four machine guns mounted on the engine, as the wing mounted guns proved to be troublesome. The third version improved on the previous design by adding small changes to the engine. The final and most produced version added an enclosed cockpit and an improved propeller. 
Before its day, the four machine guns allowed for satisfactory firepower, as in total, they could release 66 rounds per second. Along with this firepower, six 10 kilogram bombs, or four 20 kilogram bombs, could be attached underneath the wings for small ground attack capabilities. The B-534 was equipped with a Hispano Suiza 12 cylinder engine of 850 horsepower. This, along with its 70 gallons of fuel storage, allowed for a range of 600 kilometers. The plane's max speed was 405 kilometers per hour and could climb at a rate of 15 meters per second, making it one of the fastest fighter biplanes of World War II. The plane also had a quick cruise speed of 345 kilometers per hour. This plane also had its share of battle experience. It saw its first action not in the hands of its creator Czechoslovakia, but by Slovakia, a German puppet state. Czechoslovakia had been split after the German invasion. Slovakia used its inherited B-534s when Hungary invaded their territory in a conflict not known to many. They were also used during the 1939 invasion of Poland. Two B-534s were destroyed in the conflict, and Slovak pilots only managed to down one Polish trainer aircraft. The plane saw further use in Greece, Yugoslavia, and Ukraine though they were largely considered outdated by then. In total, around 568 were produced. In 1930, the British Royal Air Force wanted a new fighter plane that could become the backbone of the Air Force. They created a list of requirements that fighter aircraft needed to meet. Designers would need to create a plane that could go at least 400 kilometers per hour and have at least four machine guns in order to get the Air Ministry interested in their design. Gloucester, an aircraft manufacturer, based a Gladiator off of their previous fighter aircraft, the Gauntlet. The first Gladiator prototype flew in September 1934, shortly before the Gauntlet entered service. In June 1935, the RAF, satisfied with early Gladiator performance, planned to admit the plane into service. In February 1937, the first Gladiators were delivered into service. By this time, it was thought that the Gladiator service would be short-lived because two superior monoplanes, the Hurricane and the Spitfire, had been in development for over a year. The Gladiator continued to be developed though because the possibility of a war in Europe was on the rise and it could be used as a stopgap fighter until more advanced aircraft could be produced in larger numbers. The first Gladiators, known as Gladiator Mark I's, were fitted with a Bristol Mercury 9 engine of 840 horsepower. The Mark I originally used two 7.7mm Vickers machine guns and two 7.7mm Lewis guns. This was later changed to use a 1.77mm Browning machine gun on each side of the fuselage, along with one 7.7mm Browning under each wing. 378 Gladiator Mark I's were produced. The Gladiator was further developed into the Gladiator Mark II as the RAF waited for more modern aircraft. The Mark II entered service in February 1938. Using a Bristol Mercury 8 engine of 840 horsepower, its top speed was 413 kilometers per hour and had a climb rate of over 11 meters per second. This model still used four 7.7mm Browning machine guns. Other changes included a three-bladed propeller and being better equipped for desert and tropical environments. Many gladiators were exported to foreign nations, such as Belgium, Sweden, Portugal, Iraq, China, and the Baltic nations. Gladiators exported to Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia were seized by the Soviets during their occupation of the Baltics. 309 of the 747 produced gladiators, or 41%, were exported to other countries. The last gladiator retired from service in Portugal in 1953. Gladiators, with some success, saw action in China, France, Norway, the Battle of Britain, North Africa, Greece, Iraq, and were used in Finland by Swedish volunteers. The gladiator's most famous usage was at the Siege of Malta, when their brave pilots fended off German and Italian attacks.
The Italian Fiat CR-42 is perhaps the most well-known biplane fighter of World War II. It became the most produced Italian fighter aircraft during the war, with around 1,781 aircraft being produced from 1939 to the fall of Italian fascism in 1943. Over 15% of all Italian aircraft produced during World War II were CR-42s. During the Spanish Civil War, Italy played an important role in helping the Spanish nationalists win. The predecessor to the CR-42, the CR-32, was used during the Civil War. The Italian Air Ministry had concluded that biplanes were still capable and relevant, judging by their success during the Civil War in Spain. Additionally, Italian pilots enjoyed maneuverable aircraft. Lastly, it was cheaper to produce the CR-42 compared to more advanced monoplanes, and the Italian war economy was lacking in comparison to other belligerents. The Italians decided to improve upon the CR-32. The plane made its first flight on May 23, 1938, and because tests proved so successful, 200 planes were ordered within a month. The dimensions of the CR-42 were amplified compared to its predecessor. The plane had an aluminum frame on its wings and tail, and was fitted with a Fiat A74RC 38 engine of 841 horsepower. It had an impressive speed of 441 kilometers per hour, making it one of the fastest biplane fighters of the era. Along with this, it had a climb rate of 12 meters per second, a fast cruise speed of 399 kilometers per hour, and a great range of 780 kilometers. Armament for this plane was somewhat weak. The CR-42 was armed with two 12.7mm Breda Safat machine guns. These guns were criticized for having a low muzzle velocity and range. 400 rounds were available for each gun, and the total firepower was 19 rounds per second. The CR-42 was used by Belgium, Sweden, Hungary, and saw combat in France, North Africa, East Africa, Britain, Greece, Malta, Iraq, and on the Eastern Front. Other variations of the CR-42 were made, such as a float plane design, a night fighter, and a model that used two additional heavy machine guns. The CR-42 AS variant had the capacity to carry two 50kg or two 100kg bombs and was better prepared for desert environments. One interesting variant was the CR-42 DB, which was fitted with a 1000 horsepower DB-601A engine the same engine used on the BF-109E. The plane could reach speeds of 520 kilometers per hour and climb at a rate of 14 meters per second, but this plane wasn't further developed or put into service. The CR-42 made the last biplane fighter kill when it shot down a P-38 Lightning, a stunning feat for a plane that was considered outdated. The Soviet I-153 was one of the most advanced biplanes of World War II. In 1937, Polykarpov, the I-153's design company, wanted to improve on its previous biplane fighters, the I-15 and the I-15 BIS, by increasing their performance without losing their much admired maneuverability. The I-153 was similarly designed to the I-15 and I-15 BIS. Some changes included a new retractable landing gear, a gold upper wing, and new guns. The gold wings proved to offer lower visibility. The I-153 entered into service in 1939 after successful testing. Most I-153s used the Shvetsov M62 engine that could generate 800 horsepower at an altitude of 4,600 meters. Being one of the fastest biplanes, the I-153 could reach a top speed of 444 kilometers per hour and had a climb rate of around 15 meters per second. Also, the I-153 was extremely agile. Its short structure allowed it to complete a 360 degree turn in 13 seconds with ease. When it comes to firepower, the I-153 did not disappoint. Its four 7.62 millimeter Shakas machine guns could tear through enemy planes with a combined fire rate of a massive 120 rounds per second. The I-153 could be equipped with eight 82mm RS-82 rockets, which
which the Soviets used to their advantage. Because the I-153 could not keep up with modern German aircraft during Operation Barbarossa, they were largely used to attack ground targets. One drawback of the I-153 was that it lacked a firewall, a fire and heat resistant covering that separated the engine and the cockpit. This resulted in many preventable burn injuries to pilots. Another downside was that the engine had a short lifespan of just 60 to 70 hours of use. Finally, if it managed to get into a spin, which it sometimes did, it required difficult and precise timing to recover the aircraft. The aircraft saw its first combat at Kalkan Gol against the Japanese, and performed with moderate success. The aircraft was supplied to China in great numbers, and was used during the Winter War and the Continuation War against Finland, in which the latter used captured I-153s to great extent. In total, 3,437 I-153s were produced from 1939 to 1941, and were used up until early 1942.